Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme, Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, in the presence of the Deputy of Commander in Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, promoted the National Security Advisor, Secretary General of the Supreme Defense Council, and Royal Guard Commander Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa to Lieutenant General at the Deputy of Headquarters. His Majesty was accompanied by his personal representative, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Royal Guard Special Force Commander, Lieutenant Colonel His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar al-Naimi, also attended. The promotion stems from His Majesty's appreciation for His Highness Sheikh Nasser's efforts in serving the nation in the military field, for his distinguished military achievements as a Secretary General of the Supreme Defense Council, National Security Advisor, and Royal Guard Commander for the development of defense and military capabilities, and for his contributions, along with the beauty of personnel, to noble humanitarian aid fields, in addition for his support to the youth, athletes and orphans, and for promoting the kingdom and regional and international sports events, the latest of which is his victory in the World Endurance Championship that was held in the UAE this year. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تقديرا لسيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم الغائد الأعلى للقوات المسلحة حفظه الله ورعاه على ما يقوم به اللواء الركن سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد آل خليفة من جهود كبيرة في خدمة الوطن في المجال العسكري وما حققه من إنجازات عسكرية مميزة وكبيرة كأمين عام لمجلس الدفاع الأعلى ومستشارا للأمن الوطني وغائدا للحرس الملكي وما يقوم به سموه من تطوير للقدرات الشبابية والعمل الإنساني صدر الأمر الملكي رقم 21 لسنة 2023 يراقل اللواء الركن سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد آل خليفة مستشار الأمن الوطني الأمين العام لمجلس الدفاع الأعلى إلى رتبة فريق ركن his Majesty noted His Highness Sheikh Nasser's efforts in serving the nation in the economic security field and as a Deputy President of the Royal Fund for Fallen Servicemen, expressing appreciation for his efforts and wishing him further success. His Majesty also hailed and appreciated the efforts of the ability of personnel in various fields and their carrying their duties with courage to protect the nation, wishing them continued success. His Majesty issued Royal Order 21 of 2023, promoting the National Security Advisor and Secretary General of the Supreme Defense Council, Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa to Lieutenant General. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received the President of the 77th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, Chaba Karochi, who is currently on a visit to the Kingdom. The meeting reviewed aspects of cooperation at various levels, and His Majesty praised the advanced level of the ongoing cooperation between Bahrain and the UNCPGA, aimed at serving sustainable development goals. His Majesty stressed the Kingdom's keenness to enhance cooperation with the UN and its various agencies, entities and programs, especially in the development, health, educational and environmental fields. His Majesty affirmed Bahrain's support for the UN's efforts in achieving its humanitarian goals. His Majesty highlighted the meeting of the Council of Presidents of the UNGA hosted by the Kingdom last March and its outcome in terms of consolidating the UN's principles to achieve global progress and prosperity. The meeting also dealt with several issues and the most prominent regional and international developments. His Majesty commended the UN's important role in promoting international peace and security and finding solutions to various global issues and problems in addition to its efforts to confront environmental and natural disasters and climate change. His Majesty affirmed that the Kingdom always seeks to promote peace, stability and prosperity while strengthening rapprochement among peoples of different cultures through tolerance, coexistence and harmony out of its belief in the values of tolerance, coexistence and harmony among all. The President thanked His Majesty the King for the warm welcome and generous hospitality, praising the vital role played by the Kingdom under His Majesty's leadership in supporting the UN's goals to serve security and stability and promote peace regionally and globally. He also lauded the development strides achieved by Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King, stressing that the Kingdom is a role model for coexistence and tolerance among various social segments.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at the BDF headquarters to U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain Stephen Craig Mondi. His Majesty reviewed with the Ambassador the deep-rooted bilateral relations and various aspects of cooperation. His Majesty expressed pride in the historical ties between Bahrain and the U.S. and the strong strategic partnership that extends to a long history of understanding, coordination and joint work, noting the prosperity and development of the cooperation in various fields. His Majesty held the vital role of the U.S. administration in the international arena and its effective efforts in establishing the pillars of regional and international security and peace. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 41 of 2023 appointing a Director General at the Foreign Affairs Ministry based on a proposal by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and following the approval of the Cabinet. Under the decree, Dr. Yusuf Abdel Karim Bouchiri was appointed Director General for Legal Affairs and Human Rights at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. His Majesty also issued Decree 42 of 2023 appointing an Assistant Under Secretary based on a proposal by the Minister of Sustainable Development and following the approval of the Cabinet. According to the decree, Don Ahmad Hamza was appointed Assistant Under Secretary for Sustainable Development at the Ministry of Sustainable Development. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa, stressed the need to continue developing the health sector by launching pioneering and qualitative programs that contribute to raising the quality of life of citizens in order to achieve the visions and aspirations of His Majesty the King and the Directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. His Highness indicated that the National Genome Center represents one of the important projects that will have a positive impact on future generations. His Highness praised the step taken by the Ministry of Health to activate the role of the center in order to achieve the initiative's goals. He directed the executive body of the GSA to open horizons of cooperation and coordinate efforts with those concerned at the National Genome Center with the aim of participating in this national project in addition to studying the genes of talented players and former champions. The GSA CEO, Dr. Abrahman Asker, held a meeting with head of the national team for the implementation of the National Genome Plan, head of public health laboratories at the Ministry of Health, Amjad Ghanem, and the accompanying team to develop a joint action plan between the two sides and activate the participation of various sports institutions in the kingdom, including clubs, associations, bodies, and committees in the National Genome Project, where the two sides agreed to cooperate and continue holding meetings to identify the appropriate mechanism that contributes to achieving common goals. Meanwhile, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa praised the achievement of runner Leia. Layla Kamal from the Faisal bin Khalid Athletics Academy, who won gold in the 100-meter women's race in the 5th Asian Junior Athletics Championship in Uzbekistan. Dubbed the fastest Asian woman, His Highness commended the accomplishment, which is thanks to the generous support of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to the sports sector. He also lauded the prominent role and efforts of the representative of His Majesty the King for humanitarian work and youth affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He also noted the remarkable role of Bahrain Athletics Association under the chairmanship of Mohammed bin Jalal in developing the national teams. His Highness commended the outstanding performance of runner Layla Kamal, who was able to clinch the first place and become the fastest female runner in the Asian continent. He took pride in the efforts of the association and the technical and administrative staff of the Faisal bin Khalid Athletics Academy, who paved the way for a new champion. Layla Kamal finished the 100-meter women's race in the first place, clocking 11 minutes and 77 seconds. Under the directors of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Works and Youth Affairs and Honorary President of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and under the patronage of the President of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the eighth edition of the late His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Hamad Al Khalifa Arabian Horses Beauty Show concluded. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for his continued support for equestrian sports, especially the sport of Arabian Horse Beauty stressing that this support contributed to its full success that bears the name of the late His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He also praised the interest and support of the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa in this regard. His Highness explained that the success achieved by this show is an incentive for the Federation to continue organizing similar shows, praising the efforts of all the committees who ensured the success of the show. The event witnessed the honoring of the winners in all categories in addition to honoring the referees, various committees, sponsors and supporters of the show. The royal anthem of the kingdom was played by the Ministry of Interior Band.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Tayyip Zayani, met with the President of the 77th session of the UNGA, Chava Korochi, and his accompanying delegation on the occasion of his visit to the Kingdom. The Minister highlighted the President's efforts through his management of the UNGA in following up on the most prominent regional and international challenges, wishing him success in all his efforts to achieve the UN goals. Dr. Zayani affirmed Bahrain's keenness on bolstering cooperation and strategic partnership with the UN and on coordinating to serve common interests in light of His Majesty the King's comprehensive the development march and the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The President expressed pride in visiting Bahrain, noting its development and hailing Bahrain's high status in the international community. He listened to a briefing on briefings on the Ministry's efforts in promoting cooperation with the UN and its agencies. Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Bahrain Labor Union Free Federation held a ceremony to honor a group of workers who were chosen by the Federation in recognition of their excellence, giving and dedication in performing their work in various productive sectors. More on this report. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa deputized the Minister of Labor, Jamil Ahmedan, to attend the annual ceremony of the 9th Bahrain Labor Union Free Federation to honor hardworking and distinguished workers and recall the march of the Bahraini labor movement and the history of Bahraini workers who contributed to building the renaissance, progress and prosperity of the homeland. This year, the Federation honored about 300 workers who contributed to the service and building of the country in various sectors. During the ceremony, focus was placed on various issues, foremost of which was the honoring of former workers who were credited with achieving tangible national achievements. The Kingdom of Bahrain has made great strides in providing aspects of support and protection for workers and preserving their rights within the advanced national legislation that is in line with international labor standards, which has made Bahrain one of the most competitive countries in the field of attracting entrepreneurs with its attractive work environment based on the great appreciation it enjoys. The Bahrain Society for Children with Behavioral and Communication Difficulties organized a marathon to raise awareness of autism under the patronage of the Minister of Social Development, Osama al Asfur, and in the presence of the President of the Society, Dr. Sheikh Rana Rania bint Ali Al Khalifa. The Minister affirmed the government's keenness to provide the best support for autism spectrum disorder, which reflects the progress of the Kingdom of Bahrain in terms of caring for and rehabilitating this group and providing them with all the necessary forms of care. He praised the humanitarian efforts made by the Society society and the field of empowering people with autism, pointing out that the association's organization of these development events contributes to enhancing opportunities and reaching all individuals with behavioral and communication difficulties, their families and community members for effective community participation. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Finance and National Economy, Yusuf Ahmoud, headed the Bahraini delegation participating in the annual joint meetings of Arab financial authorities in Morocco. These meetings were held under pa patronage of the King of Morocco, His Majesty King Mohammed VI, in the presence of Arab financial and economic ministers. The meetings discussed a number of topics, including the achievements of the authorities in providing financial and technical support to major development projects in Arab countries and their contributions in enhancing joint Arab action. The second deputy of the Shura Council, Dr. Jihad Al-Fadl, chaired the weekly meeting where the Council approved a draft law regarding linking payment systems among GCC countries, which aims to supporting the desired economic integration among the GCC countries, in line with the GCC economic agreement aimed at strengthening their economies in light of global economic developments. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil Assoumi, delivered a speech during the Arab Parliament meeting in Cairo that witnessed the honoring of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence. The honoring came to recognize the center's efforts and was received by the Deputy Chairman of the Center, Abdul Wahab Al Hawaj. Al Assoumi praised the efforts of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence, which are in line with the directives of His Majesty the King, to consolidate dialogue and peaceful coexistence among religions and combat extremism and hate speech through pioneering initiatives in the regional and international levels. The Arab Parliament held its plenary session, chaired by Speaker Adel Assoumi at the headquarters of the General Secretariat of the Arab League. The meeting discussed developments and the current situation in the region, including the Palestinian cause. With regard to a situation in Sudan, the Arab Parliament expressed its solidarity with the Sudanese people, calling for a peaceful dialogue to defuse the current crisis and work to restore stability in the state. The meeting also discussed a draft guiding law on protecting privacy and combating electronic extortion, and a draft roadmap to confront child labor. In 
addition to a number of issues related to the situation of human rights in the Arab world. The Ministry of Works has completed the largest concrete casting at Al Fatah Mosque intersection with more than 2,200 cubic meters and it took 12 hours continuously. More than 180 workers, supervisors and engineers were present and more than 297 tons of iron were used. The Ministry said that it had prepared an integrated plan to ensure the completion of the work due to the large amount of concrete used and the sensitivity of the site. The total number of concrete tunnel pieces is 21 and the completion rate of the tunnel work has reached 70 percent, while the total completion rate of the project is 63 percent. The Sudanese army said today that it had destroyed rapid support forces convoys moving towards Khartoum from the west. The RSF said that the army had used artillery and warplanes to attack its positions in a number of areas in Khartoum province. Sudan's rival military forces continue to access each other to of fresh violations of a ceasefire that is set to expire today as their deadly conflict continued for a third week despite warnings of a slide towards catastrophic civil war. More than 500 people have been killed and thousands wounded since battles erupted on April 15th. Sudanese media reported columns of smoke blowing from the center of the capital Khartoum today and circulating images showed a fire at the central bank of Sudan. Thousands of foreigners are evacuated from Sudan as Khartoum has seen airstrikes and sporadic gunfire despite a de declared ceasefire and international efforts to stop the fighting amid warnings that the fighting was turning in a civil war. Meanwhile, Arabia Channel reported that explosions and a firefight were heard in the vicinity of the Army General Headquarters and that Army units were carrying out mopping up operations in North Khartoum.